All right, so this is a demo of a project that I kind of been working on. It started out as just simply um, figuring out how to use SQLite from Go. Um, it ended up being like a normal relational database interface to full text searching, and I didn't uh, didn't necessarily need Elasticsearch for this. Um, so, so what this is is this is a uh, it's, it's going to be a, a a file system. Um, into which you can upload things and one of the problems with uploading things is HTTP is standardized reading files but the the part where you're writing files are not quite standardized like if you do a post request um, it could be multi-part MIME which is kind of well known although a lot of people don't like to use multi-part MIME or you can use uh, data binary for your, for your uploads um, but then once you do that, there isn't a standard for how do you put permissions on things. And if you don't have a standard on putting permissions on things, then it's almost kind of pointless to standardize anything else because you need to be able to safely write into people's web servers. Um, um, and one of the things you, things you need to be able to do is to like host like large content, like videos, being able to range requests, things like that. Um, just like really common. So this is a genre of apps that I had... Um, done a lot with for the last eight years at my job um, and um, and I got pretty good at doing this sort of thing and go so this is like two weeks of work um, like a two-day head start because uh, bef you know before that I'd learned how to do go SQLite and like playing around with this repo but um, but but the main thing is um, so imagine um, you want to do front-end development and you just want to be able to upload things and you want full-text search indexing uh, making thumbnail images, permission systems, you don't want it to be like your problem. Like you want like an AI pipeline so that when you upload files, other files get created as side effects. Um, so if you want to get uh, permission to write into the system, um, you would end up having to have a uh, uh, have an account created for you. And right now I just have a simple thing where uh, someone could mail you a link with a you know random number random string in the link and that is set as a cookie and those cookies are set for your attributes um, which um, in a lot of cases would normally be like jaw claims but for instance here um, this random cookie uh, would be associated with a uh, person that has a list of you know possible names roles emails and attributes like age or something like that um, or it could be like citizenship um, or, uh, you know, um, in any way that you could uh, pick apart a permission system. Like an LDAP would be like a group name with multiple values, and so it kind of fits um, the LDAP pattern. So this is the cookie that it would map to, um, and these are the attributes. So if somebody mailed you a link that looks like uh, this link here, um, I have a function for doing registration, which would take this this secret here, secret cookie, and uh, set it as your cookie and reforge to just get you into the site, like once the site is running. Um, so uh, let's bring up the site. Um, I had built it on a container. Um, I really didn't want to get into microservices. Um, at some point I could split this up and not use Go SQLite because it's embedded, I would have to like move to Elasticsearch. But yeah, it could be Elasticsearch and Postgres, but right now it's just file system that does like everything except for the searching, which ironically is done in a relational database. So I use a relational database for search. Everything else is done like on the file system. Could be replaced with S3. Um, in any case, I built it with a container. It takes quite a while to build. Um, I need to figure out a better way of doing that, but it builds in Go and it builds in container, so it has to like download everything, and because it's Go, it takes forever to compile. But anyways, yeah, after four minutes of compiling, sometimes, I want to bring up the server, and so if I uh, bring up this server, okay, um, so it's just kind of showing a couple of example links. Um, there's a link for, for one user and a link for another user. And what I want to do is I want to bring them up in two different browsers. Um, but first, um, actually, let's go in and see what it looks like when it's empty. If we go in right now, um, it will create a home directory for you when you first hit it. Because 
if you come in with a cookie set and, and, um, and we did the registration so the cookie is set these are my attributes um, and importantly my email address is asserted to be rob.fielding at gmail.com and because it's asserted that I had that email address we have no problem in just writing a home directory that you're allowed to write into and we write into a directory that is named after you and the only thing that's in here right now is the default permissions and default permissions will show like a green banner called public you know with white text nobody's allowed to write by default um, and, uh, but everyone is allowed to read and uh, there's an exception to it if your email was asserted to be robbedupfielding at gmail.com then you're allowed to write and what that means is that uh, when I go back to uh, to here that means I will be able to write in that home directory okay and so I have a, a script that actually does um, some writes of a whole bunch of content so so there's a ton of stuff in here and um, in in a whole API is just uh, simple post requests using binary data um, it, it's more normal to use multi-part mime because then you can upload the file and lots of attributes about it you know like a big JSON chunk and then the file but really people don't like doing that they um, so what I do is I just say hey look um, it's not atomic upload the permissions first if you want to make sure there's lockdown when the other when the file lands right um, so you can just upload files here like like in this instance uh let me find one i'm actually uploading tarball in almost every case really good here. so if it, find every pdf do a post request using my account just upload as a binary file and that's the actual file name and this is where we want it to land um and there are other examples which are actually more useful i can create an entire react app so here i do um i say if the build doesn't exist then do um a, a npm create react app and then um, when I do it, I put this public URL equals dot so that when I mount it in the tree, um, the image the images directory is like in the right place and the React app actually like just works out of the box. So so the idea is if I upload a zipped file, so I go into React build, I zip it up and I upload it. This would allow you to basically do React development and use a, upload your app into the server itself. Um, so the idea is uh, the actual endpoints that you want to hit um, normally you'd be, you'd be like behind a reverse proxy so that you can get to the other applications that you need to talk to um, but if I want to make the UI for this server in its I would actually make a react app and I would actually upload the react app itself into the server on startup if I want a better app uh, I'm not really a front-end guy um, but I made this partially because I'm gonna be learning front-end and I want to have this AI pipeline to augment with with extra files as they go up okay so now let's actually do this where it runs all these curl um, requests okay and did I start the server yes yes I start the server okay um, so not only is it writing the files I actually upload it's putting in derived files like in, um, in this case like all these books of the Bible um, I didn't upload all the books of the Bible and visually what I did was I uploaded a tarball and I put a parameter and said don't literally put the tarball up I want you to unpack the tarball into the directory um, that I gave you and so it uh, yeah it's, it's all unpacked in here now so um, w one of the things are uh, when images go up um, you know some dude and another dude what happens is when it uploaded this this JPEG file um, normally it did a label detect and the label detects oh it looks like there's people in here and, and so then you get a JSON file from AWS recognition you know, that says there are people in this file and, and use the fact that, it, that there are people in that JSON file to, just, to figure out the faces like who are the people in the file okay so now that everything is uploaded um, I should end up uh, having some content um, and so if I go to the directory I go to my home directory where I uploaded stuff and I go look at my documents and here's what I uploaded a whole bunch of things um, and so what we can do is um, instead of looking at the JPEG, we are we are blind, right? We we uh, like a computer. A computer doesn't really know what's in this. It has to go to some kind of service to figure out what's in it. Um, 
first thing, uh, this permissions file determines like what these labels on all these are. They're all derived from the same thing, hence the dash dash after. Um, so it made a thumbnail, which we won't look at yet, but the first thing it did, looked at the labels. And when it looked at the labels, if you go through here, there are like rectangles that draw around like certain things that it found, and there are things that it tells you that it found. And um, one of the things in here, it should say, somewhere in here it says the word person or people. And that was a yeah, person. Here you go. There's a person in there. And so my code says, oh, well, if there's a person in it, then um, I'm using the uh, celebrity detect. Um, there, there is a thing for faces, um, but this is a celebrity. It's actually the celebrity detect is what I called this label. Um, and so now that it has a celebrity detect, um, we know without even clicking on it that it's a picture of Robert Oppenheimer. Okay, cool. Um, so we didn't even look at it, um, and we found it. And the reason why you want to do this is it's like a, it, it's like the back end to doing accessibility. Like like in accessibility, uh, when you write HTML and you do images, you're supposed to put an alt tag on there that says what it is. Um, and this is a little bit of a problem because people just take JPEGs and just upload them. And, um, and, and sometimes a human doesn't even look at it before it gets uploaded. They just upload the file, and then blind people um, are... Kind of mad about this, right? Because they're seeing your Braille terminal and nothing works unless everything is text. So the idea is you want to be able to make a front end app and all your images and stuff, you don't want to have to worry about all the, all the labeling. Um, I will have to figure out how to set the alt text on, on every image because even though I can figure out what the alt text is, um, HTML, I, I don't know if there is a way to, to actually like read a header off of uh, a JPEG file and say, okay, set that to the alt text um, for this image, right? So it's like, I got the image, but I need alt text for blind people, so I would like a, a description of it. Um, I don't really know if you can do that unless you like explicitly write that in your app. But yeah, it would be possible because you can write an app and um, you can just assume that thumbnails don't exist and you can just assume that, that labels exist and phases exist so that you can write your app such that um, it's not your problem. You don't have to deal with creating these files because this is what creates the microservices mess is when you just got a simple app that you want to upload and and you have to and you have to have like this um you have to create this pipeline to like hey i need to make thumbnails of my images because that's just like a constant thing i need to do and i need an ai pipeline to extract faces and labels and oh, by the way, to keep people from messing up my site and vandalizing it, I need a permission system. And it would also be like a requirement, like um, if you were to just like host one of these, um, you would issue someone an account, and that person with the account is allowed to do whatever, like within the range of like not messing up other people's stuff. Um, okay, so that would mean, so if I took this registration link, and I go in here, I am a different person when I and using Safari, and um, this is a person with a different email, Donica77, that's my daughter, and um, and so remember, uh, if you if it's asserted what your email address, it just magically creates a directory that you are allowed to write into, so it's publicly viewable, um, read write, and you know, I have read and write permissions on it. Um, pub this is just this label is uh, just informative, you know, it'll it'll kind of describe why it is that you have read access. I have read access on it because it's public, but I don't necessarily have write access on it. Like, like uh, say the init directory here is all the stuff that drives the site. It's the, uh, you know, here's the uh, template for when a new user is created. That's what their permissions look like. And Rego is a standard for permissions. Um, open policy agent, basically. So this is, I'm using open policy agent there um, because right now that is the closest thing there is a standard for creating permissions. Um, everything else is like haphazard and everybody does it different. Um, but in any case, yeah, so uh, if I do a, uh, what is this, uh, the search, um, but in any case, yeah, so you, 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 when you do directory listings, you do searches, all that stuff, I externalized it out to here, which means that if you have read-write permissions on it, you can actually update the templates, which means you would just grant, grant an account that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, upload a permissions directory into here that, that allows the admin to go in and mess with it. Okay, so if I go into Donica's account, um, she doesn't see anything here because nothing was uploaded there, but if I go into somebody else's, this is kind of like a, 
this is kind of like the the Unix home directory, right? You got slash home and then names of users. Um, so if I go into here, I see that I have read only permission on a bunch of stuff. So that means that um, I could go into here and uh, yeah, yeah. Let me go back. So 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 there's a, there's a movie there. It's probably taking a while to upload it. So. Um, for instance, go into the Book of Gilgamesh and do some reading on it. And, and because I am able to have read permissions, the searches should work. So if I look for the word U-R-U-K, look for Uruk, right? So I get some hits on the Book of Gilgamesh, but I am Danica, but this is Rob's account. So I see hits on that content there so that I can go read bits of the Gilgamesh. Right, and uh, if I go back and I search on things that that are not necessarily um, text, if I look for a pet, um, let's see, do I get anything on pets? Yeah, if if I look for a pet, um, you might get hits where I, this was this was probably like the word profit that got cut during the um, chunking of things, um, but in any case, uh, there, there's a hit here somewhere inside of. Jeremiah, but uh, also yeah, that uh, the labeling on here it says that these are pets, and in, in, um, and I guess the way that we can figure out the reasoning behind this is if we are looking at this, we use naming conventions for everything. So if I do dash dash, uh, probably uh, labels.json, um, I should find the word pet, and there's a word pet. That that is why it hit, um, because I'm indexing the JSON that came back. Um, just like raw indexing it, and like, you know, just like grep. Okay, so if I go back to the, the user that actually wrote these files, um, we see that um, when I did the directory listing here of rob.fielding, um, if I look in documents, it's a shorter list um, because it's basically everything that's public. There are some files that aren't public. Um, like these are not public, and not only that, I can write them. Um, in, in here, not only um, it, are there files that I can't read, but I also can't write anything because it's like not in my directory. Which means if I try to do a post request or a delete request up against any of these files, um, nothing's going to happen. Um, I'll just get an error back. Um, and, and, and so that's the point of it. It's like you, you, uh, if you're working on a React app, you make a zip of it, and you say, I'm going to upload it into a particular location. And when you upload the app into a particular location, it is then mounted in the server. So, so what could happen is um, you could stand this up. Um, you could have it multi-tenant where you have a bunch of users in here making their little React apps and, and um, uploading them into here. And right now I'm not doing any reverse proxies in this, but what, what, what the idea completely is, is, is you could stand up this server and then you have a reverse proxy in front of it so that you can make your app refer to other services, right? So um, if, I had a, if I had to have a, a service in here to um, say uh, do, you know, order products or whatever, um, I could have a, a, um, some service called product order and it's a container. And if there's a um, reverse proxy in front of it, then this app could actually have URLs that refer to the product service. And, and, and um, you know, and this is just like something that serves up the front end. Um, that's like really the point of it. It's a content management system where instead of instead of spending, spending it all working on a UI to do kind of like a Facebook like you don't need necessarily, you don't necessarily need to know HTML, but you can post content. Right. That's how um, like like SharePoint, for instance, tries to do a simplify that aspect of it and what i'm trying to do is say look people are going to make tarballs of content that they want put up in in uh, what you want to fix is uh like all these cross-cutting concerns and cross-cutting concerns would be things like being able to search on keywords um like that um so, so you search on keywords and, and um and notice that uh i had manually Created a thumbnail like like you don't have to ha the AI doesn't have to create the thumbnail um, if you've already got a thumbnail just go ahead and upload it um, right because that's the idea uh, an AI will do like a first cut in it and there may be you know false pauses and the searches that it creates or 
um, it'll mislabel something. Like, uh, for instance, if I do person, I get something kind of strange here um, from AWS recognition. Um, the word person shows up in the Bible, but uh, you know some of the images were uploaded last, and, and so what? What? That's not a person. But um, but anyways, uh, in a lot of cases, uh, if I want to override things, then I'll just override them. Like put my own thumbnail. Um, make it, that's a that's a thumbnail that came out of a video, and because of this, this the simple container that I'm using has kind of a a mess of different things in it because I just wanted to make it to where you can like bring it up and demo it. Um, and not necessarily get caught up in, in the whole microservices mesh. So why am I able to do this? I'm able to do this because uh, if, I, if I'm building the image, like if I go to the Docker file um, for it, um, where it does the build, um, on this box, I, I basically just like take all the source for it and I do the build, but I include on it, uh, a JRE, because I'm bringing up Tikka to do text extracts out of PDFs and Word docs and whatnot, all the Office docs. I bring up FFmpeg because if I want to do a thumbnail of an image, uh, uh, do a thumbnail out of a, a video, then then that will show up. And um, and if I want to do a thumbnail of a normal image, I use Image Magic. Um, and so. Yeah, so the idea is is I, is I have all this stuff in here, so when I build the image, when I go to bring it up, um, and, and, I, and I show, like, when I, what I do when I actually bring it up. When I bring it up, I just make sure that um, if you mounted a directory called persistent, which could be just completely empty volume mount, um, it makes sure that the, the database schema which has nothing to do with the files is really about the uh, the, the te full text indexing. Um, that's that's where, when you see the word FTS five is full text search five for um, SQLite. Um, and SQLite is an embedded database, which means you only have one instance of this. Um, which means that uh, scaling it up, which it will require a little bit of refactoring to just like use a different search engine. It could be Elasticsearch. Um, Elasticsearch uses a lot of memory and all this other stuff, but yeah, I could even still pack into one big container like I am now. Um, but in any case, yeah, it comes up and what it does is it, it runs Tikka in the background along with uh, our Go binary micro CMS and it put, you know, puts a default permission in here um, and then all the actual templates that are used to, to render the site. Um, uh, yeah, so the default permission for new users is this template, and then the, like the permission for the root of the file system is like that. Okay. And yeah, so 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 the the projects that I had worked on that had some similarities had vastly different requirements. Um, one of them was is because because if you allow a file to be hidden because you're not um, allowed to see it, right? The permissions say uh, you're not allowed to see the file. Well, uh, if it was called Aurora.pdf, if I tried to create an Aurora.pdf and it failed, I would be telling you that somebody created a thing called Aurora.pdf. Um, so I had to use um, object identifiers to allow for multiple copies of the same file in the same directory. And just like getting rid of that requirement um, enabled me to do something in two weeks that would take months. Um, it vastly simplifies things everywhere because HTTP wants to do everything by file name. And if you don't, you're not complying with what it wants and everything becomes hard. Um, so, uh, for example, um, well, in any case, it, like, like if there are random numbers associated with, with each, each of these uh, files in here, there could be two things that are called um, uh, let's see, it's going to the documents. There could be two different things called usl.pdf um, if you allowed that, but I'm not going to allow that. Um, uh, the, the file name is the unique identifier, no versions, no object identifiers, and you got something that's vastly simpler to use, vastly simpler to document. The API is simpler. You don't use multi-part mime because what you can do is you can you upload the permissions first if you need to make a special case for it, right? So this, if you upload this first, then when all these other files go up, they will be locked down and nobody that without the clearance will be able to see them. In fact, let's look at what this permission is. Um, so it's just a label. And this is kind of like, a, you know, some stuff that you had used to figure out what goes into it. 
And, and the thing is, your attributes have to mark you as an adult to be able to read it. Um, because, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if you saw the Oppenheimer movie. <laughs> yeah, you got to be an adult to see that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you need to be, you need to possess at least this email to be able to, to write it. Um, you can have multiple emails. You can have multiple um, names as well, right? Um, you know, your, your, your maiden name, your in your in your name after you got married that would be perfectly fine because the idea is you want to upload something you want permission on it and and you don't uh you want to uh if you can you want to lock things down by roles so that you could rotate people through roles like instead of locking it down by a person's email address uh you got different things if a person disappears you could let them ad adopt the old email address or you could just say if uh, input group role you want know, a person in a role and you know i can have like 20 people in the same role maybe not at the same time like today i'm in a role i move on to a new job and then somebody else is put into the role because the idea is you want to upload files and you don't want to have to modify the files to not lose the data right so if you have a permission system you have to be able to rotate through users um and that's a pretty common thing so um i'm trying to think of something that I haven't shown for the most part. Oh, yeah, video. So if I if I go if I go back to the gateways video again, um, not every media file is a single file really. So what happens is you can uh, let's see, you you you'll have a video time text file. Um, which is kind of like the the karaoke stuff. It, it like puts puts an actual time on when things show up, along with an index.html to wire it together with the MP4 file. And because of that, um, you can do search on video. And and not only can you do search on video, but um, when you get a hit back, you can write code in such a way that um, when hits come back, you could actually bring up a video player that is fast forwarded to the location where the word actually happened. And show you what I mean by that. So, so ended up um, hitting on this video here in video time text, and I discovered that at two minutes and fifty seconds in, it uses the word ancient. Um, and, and, where, and where this would be useful is if you had security video, and um, in, in, in uh, if you're doing certain kinds of uh, you know like police work or whatever. Uh, you would have a situation like this. We have to bring up video of something like a security camera footage of a crime scene. You would have to go through and say, you know, like at five minutes and two seconds in, um, somebody put a backpack down there and then, you know, an hour later the backpack exploded and there's like a timestamp for that. And, and, uh, and the idea would be that you should be able to search for stuff, right? And so you should be able to go into the search because you put in ancient, ancient uh, you put in a video time text in a, I don't even know this word exists anywhere in this document. Huh. Okay, so yeah, so the TI-84 manual says the word explode. Awesome. Yeah, so be careful with your calculator. I don't know what's going on there. Um... Yeah. <laughs> um, but in case, what, what this is, is wiring together all the cross-cutting concerns that makes development a pain in the butt. The first is that HTTP only defines GET requests. They uh, define how you upload a file, um, but there's many ways to do it. And without a permission system, it's all kind of useless. Um, so, so if you adopt Open Policy Agent, then, then you can use file naming conventions. Uh, to just put more files on the system, uh, which would mean that if you're doing data migration, uh, you just need to make sure that the file system is preserved and your full text search engine. Um, maybe you could re, re index them from start if you didn't, if you weren't able to preserve it. But you have all the sources that caused all the things that went into the full text engine. So, so as long as you keep the 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 volume out and you don't lose any of the information you should be able to like redo a whole bunch of stuff and, and you'll be fine to, to do migrations uh but in any case uh yeah this is um th this is something that i learned over over many years of i done a couple projects that are kind of similar that actually like went somewhere and like in between the two of them i did like five or six prototypes that didn't 
make it very far. Um, but by far, the best thing that you can do is to um, find ways to simplify everything. And, and one of the, the, the best simplifications that there is is um, um, in the API. Um, I'm not sure if I just like include the curl request in here. Um, you want everything to look like this, where, where if, if you upload a file, you do a curl request. And instead of using multi-part MIME and getting complicated, fine. You upload a permission for the file first, and then once the permission for the file is uploaded, you, you then upload the file itself. And then, and then once you upload the file itself, it'll start creating thumbnails and, and all these other things and doing search on it. And because the permission went up there first, um, you'll be okay and things won't show up in searches before before their time right so if I look for if I look for Oppenheimer um, he comes back here and this other user um, should not be seeing um, I'm you know I'm, I'm not sure if I even check but I'm pretty sure that yeah it won't come back so right because it's in the full text search database but um, but I use that permissions to filter it out. And the reason why Donica didn't see that this file exists is because if I if I go look at the file um, and I go look um, here, uh, permissions, it's because age adult needs to be satisfied. And let's see what happens. Is the date old? Well, at the time I made the token, uh, Donica was not an adult. So, she doesn't get to see Oppenheimer. She is now. So yeah, I should yeah, I should update her token. But yep, that's the end of the video. Thanks.